Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. And today is my birthday and I took a day off work just to hang out around town, um, enjoy some nice food and drinks and just sketch. So it's a bright sunny day and here I am walking around Cot de Neige area in Montreal. And here I'm approaching this uh, Japanese ramen restaurant. It's my first time here and I really want to try out the ramen noodles. So here's the inside. It's very clean and spacious. And here's their menu. Um, yeah, in French. I can read a little bit of French. And there are two girls in front of me talking and I ordered a cup of uh, fried chicken ramen. The soup and the chicken and noodles are actually really good. So after lunch, I kept on walking around this area and just feel about this really nice inviting seascape atmosphere here. There's a market right across uh, from the street of the metro station and it's very windy right now but the weather is so cool it's not too hot and humid. Lots of local fruit and veggies here in this market and then I met my friend Lara and we ordered uh, bubble tea. So here I am just doing the watercolor painting part of my little sketch of my cup of bubble tea uh, Earl Grey flavor. Yeah, I love the bubbles. Yeah, having a cup of bubble tea on a summer day is so satisfying. Just adding the second layer right now, some mid-tones of orange-brown around the side and leaving some parts of the first layer just so the bubble tea it looks more translucent this way. And then gradually add a little bit more raw umber color, just building up the layers, uh, layer by layer without rushing it. So after having the bubble tea, we took the metro to, to John Tallon Market. It's our first time here. And walking through the marketplace and the streets around it, it's just so nostalgic. It really reminds me of my childhood years. Okay, so all of these red brick buildings are just so old-fashioned, brings back memories of the past. I really hope this part of the city really stays this way for a long, long time. And it really feels like travel back in space and time. So here I am, just sitting outside the restaurant with my friend Lara, and we're both doing a sketch of the view on our right-hand side of the brown brick buildings. Okay, and so I began with the upper contour outline of the building cluster joined together. And then I'm starting to draw the details on the left-hand side because I'm right-handed. I always like to start uh, drawing on the left left-hand side most of the time. Okay, so around the middle part, there's the banners and the, and the little canopy of the cafe. On the canopy, there are stripes, and the stripes this way it gives a bit of three dimension to the canopy, and the name of the cafe. And keep adding some more essential lines that um, really defines the identity of this building. Adding some little chairs outside the door and a little table right there, just so there's a, a variety of shapes in here. So I'm just drawing pretty quickly, just trying to capture the spirit of uh, this exterior of a cafe and not really worry too much about the um, physical accuracy of those chairs. And just adding these little cone-shaped evergreen bushes behind the tables and chairs and just adding this man uh, waiting on the sidewalk so he was able to stand still for about 30 seconds. And keep adding some more window and door frames underneath the canopy of the cafe and color in the, the glass part with black ink. So yeah, so the building looks like it is more deep and contains more density. And adding some windows for the uh, upper levels of this building. Mostly are squares and tiny little rectangles. Again, filling in the inside of the window with black ink. Because most windows during daytime, they look pretty dark and the railings of a balcony there. Keep adding another 
part in the middle and some more railings for the balconies on the side of the building. So as you can see, these buildings are actually uh, prism shapes, like huge building blocks of prism shapes joined together. And just adding the entrance of this, um, I think there's a, this is another little restaurant here. Actually, this door is the door to a musical school. And yeah, lots of, lots of different kinds of rectangular shapes. And just working on this middle building over here. But before that, I want to add this foreground element, the, the street lamp, which is pretty thick and big. And adding this kind of uh, slanting slope of a little roof is broken. And adding this lady walking past by, kind of from the memory, because she walked past by and, and disappeared in about 10 seconds. And again, just keep adding those essential details, like the bars in the middle of these buildings. And now I'm starting to add the wires emerging from the, uh, the lamps and the poles around. Okay, so these wires, they might look messy, but it's actually part of the identity of the cityscape. So uh, yeah, I'm not really so stressed about it. And adding these vertical lines just to add more variety of a pattern. And this curving staircase is really cute. And some more lines and shapes, these little windows. So again, when drawing buildings, just don't worry about making perfectly straight lines like architects. Um, architects, they have to draw perfectly straight lines just to be very functional because they want to build buildings that is very accurate and not falling down, right? But for artists, we don't have to be functional. Um, our buildings sometimes can even look wonky to express our feelings and just for fun. And so just relax and don't be too serious. Okay, just have fun. And just keep adding some more uh, window and door frames around the lower level and the banners in front of the, the shop. Yeah, and some little stickers on the windows, those minor details. Add some little accentuation here and there, some denser lines. And here's another uh, little restaurant on the right hand side. Again, the canopy is three dimensional and these uh, small squares and rectangles. And some more uh, slanting lines to show the uh, staircases and windows. That's pretty much it for the line drawing of these buildings. Now I'm just taking my time to add some very small details. I think I've captured the essentials of these buildings for now. Just some minor details. And to make these buildings look even more interesting and to give them more identity and character, I'm just adding quickly uh, these uh, super quick and loose parallel lines and tiny little vertical lines to show the brick texture on the exterior of these buildings. Yeah. And just working really quickly, it doesn't have to look exactly exactly the same as the real thing. Just just get the pattern in. And lastly, just adding the sidewalk line and the thickness of it. And a little line to give three dimension to the sidewalk. I think that's it for the line work. And here is the look of my finished line work. It took me about 25 minutes. And now I'm ready to paint watercolors just to uh, really add the feeling of the atmosphere in. But still, the line work is already telling something. But I always love to add colors. And so first of all, I'm going to use my watery Hobain brand water brush just to wet the sky area. So when painting a landscape or, city or cityscape, I always like to paint the sky area first because it's on the very back. It's just easier to start that way. And now I'm putting on very, very loosely using choppy brush strokes um, of cerulean blue around the sky area. So the sky right now is actually very cloudy and it's challenging. Just kind of trying my best to capture the movement of the sky and the clouds. 
So the sky today is very dynamic and inspiring to paint. So after that, I'm just adding a mix of ultramarine blue with a little bit of royal purple. So this is the shade color for the clouds that are moving so fast across the sky and covering the sun once in a while. So sometimes it got so hot because there's no cloud over the sun. Sometimes um, it's so chilly because all of a sudden there's a piece of cloud covering up the sun and just punching on a little bit of royal purple here just to give these clouds more life and liveliness. And so when painting a really busy and fast moving sky, just, you know, don't worry about, you know, being exactly the same because pretty much every second is different. You can't really capture the sky exactly the same as you see, okay? And also if you're working from photographs, don't try to copy the photo exactly. You want to kind of express the sensations within that patch of sky there, okay? And all right, so I think the sky is done. I'm not gonna overwork on it. Now I'm just kind of wetting the, uh, the building area with a little bit of water. I'm just finishing up a little bit of a, a sky above the rooftops that I missed. And just keep wetting the building areas with a little bit of clear water. Grabbing some burnt sienna or brown mix it with a little bit of red and tiny bit of um, raw umber yeah and just kind of spread it around sometimes i grab a little bit of uh, more red magenta to mix into this paint mixture so every brush stroke can be of a different tone of brown or red brown or dark brown yeah and just let these colors blend nice and soft together and yeah, so this is the first layer for these buildings. Their colors are pretty similar. Yeah. Because they're all connected together in a cluster. And just keep adding this brown here and there. I'm going to add another layer to show the brick texture even better. So now, right now, I know it looks kind of flat, but just keep playing with the browns. Okay, and just keep finishing up pretty much all the little areas containing uh, the bricks. Yeah, smaller brushstrokes for smaller spaces. And now I just kind of want to paint a little bit more of the sky because it's actually all the way down touching the rooftops. Also in between those wires. And now I just used uh, some leftover gray diluted with lots of water. So I like to mix my own gray with ultramarine blue, a little bit green and a tiny bit of magenta and dilute that with lots of water for this first layer of the sidewalk. And also for the uh, glassy areas of the uh, windows and the doors here and there, those little squares and rectangles. And leaving a tiny bit, little bit of white to show the shine, the glare of the, uh, the glass. Some darker grays, uh, darker grays to show um, the dark shades inside those glass windows or doors. And adding some fresh lime green mixed with a little bit of yellow for those canopies there. And also using uh, magenta pink to paint that sign of the uh, cafe. Keep adding some more gray tones for the windows here and there. And I really like adding these fresh greens and that bit of red over there on the left side. And also these intense grays for the windows and doors because most of the this sketch contains a lot of browns. Brown is a warm color and it's pretty important to have some cold colors like greens and blues, especially the sky. Uh, the cold colors for the sky and the clouds is really nice contrast with the warm uh, browns of the building below it. And now I'm adding the uh, second layer. As you can see, I'm switching to a smaller kit water brush and adding some more 
intense browns containing less water. So again, when painting with watercolors, be really aware of the amount of water that you add into it, into the paint. So for the first layer, I like to mix a lot of water into the paint. Now for the second and the third layer, I mix less water. So the paint is more vibrant and solid. As you can see, I'm using these tiny little chalky brush strokes to create illusions of brick pieces and leaving the first, some areas from the first layer to show lighter tones of bricks. So now the building on the left, it looks more, much more dynamic compared to the building on, in the middle and on the right. Yeah, and I'm doing this wet on to dry, which means the first layer has to be pretty much completely dried before I'm adding these little uh, choppy brush strokes of bricks, okay? It's very important to wait for the previous layer to dry. And I'm doing this movement pretty fast, so my painting speed right now is still the same, two times faster um, compared to real life painting speed. So it's still pretty fast. And again, I'm not trying to copy. What I really, really see is just about my impression, okay? Yeah, just my impression. Because there's too many uh, bricks to count, of course. Just relax and paint the pattern from my impressions and sensations. Almost there. This actually really takes lots of patience. Hold on tight. And a lot of brick buildings actually contains two or three different shades of browns. So now I'm adding the third layer, which is more of a raw umber color, or you can mix deep blue into burnt sienna to get a very intense brown. Okay, so yeah, just adding this for the building in the middle. That building in the middle contains more uh, dark shades of brown. And painting is all about making decisions. Actually, I wasn't very happy uh, after painting the first layer because uh, for some seconds, I didn't know what to do. The buildings looked really flat, so I kind of had to improvise on a moment about how to make these buildings look more dynamic. So I just decided to use these uh, choppy brush strokes of uh, stronger brown tones on top of the first layer of light browns. So sometimes we have to think more deeply of how to translate the charm of a scenery into drawing and painting techniques. So a lot of drawing and painting techniques may look pretty easy, but it's actually not easy to make those uh, decisions. And I think that's it for the exterior of those brick buildings. And now I'm just going to work on the uh, these red chairs, which is pretty straightforward. Just grab some fresh red and just paint them in. Nice and vibrant. Really draw some viewers in. And the tables with leftover uh, dark gray. And switching back to my large broad water brush and grab some leftover gray this time containing a little less water so it looks a little bit more intense on top of the first layer of the concrete sidewalk and add some stronger gray tones for the windows in the middle here and there again windows during daylight they can look pretty dark and some little final polish here and there with a lot of leftover grays. Um, so right now it's actually pretty hot. The sun just came out from behind the clouds and yeah, it's like kind of burning on my back. So I had to kind of hurry up with the painting. Yeah, just kind of using uh, even more intense leftover grays to paint these window frames on the uh, ground floor. And so, yeah, just a little bit more accentuations here and there. So one of the challenges of painting on location is that you have to bear the, um, the temperature, the weather. And also sometimes people walking around you and trying to see what you're doing. So you really have to be brave when sketching outdoors and believe that you're able to do it, to finish it. So your mindset and your persistence 
to push all the way to the end is very important to keep this creative habit going. So just um, you know, engage with your environment using your heart and draw and paint what you, how you feel. And don't worry about perfectionism, okay? And I think that's pretty much it for this sketch. That was a great day with Lara. <laughs> Hanging out together around Plateau Monk Royal and the uh, uh, Drong Thailand Market. Yeah, that was good. And now it's time to go home. I had a really fantastic birthday with my friend Lara. Thank you so much, Lara, for hanging out with me today.